Hello, welcome to part 4 of the lesson on internal resistance. This is the final part, I'm sure you're delighted to hear, and in this part we'll take a look at how to measure internal resistance. We usually measure EMF, electromotive force, and internal resistance together, so in fact that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at a quick method of doing this, we're going to look at a more accurate but longer graphical method. Let's start with a quick method. To get the EMF is easy. We just connect the voltmeter directly to the terminals of the cell. The voltmeter reading, let's call it V subscript naught, V naught. I'll be using V by itself later for something else. So we'll call this reading V naught. And the EMF is equal to V naught, assuming that the voltmeter's resistance is much bigger than R. If the voltmeter's resistance isn't big enough, then what happens is a significant current flows around the circuit. That means there's some lost volts across the internal resistor and our value of V0 is a little bit smaller than the true EMF. Now in practice a modern digital voltmeter will have a very high resistance, 10 megohms, 20 megohms, a megohm is a million ohms, and that's more than sufficient to give us an accurate reading of EMF. So this is a pretty decent way of getting the EMF. To get the internal resistance we need a voltage and current measurement. So what we do is we add an external resistor, capital R, to the circuit. That's the outer loop here. We still have the voltmeter connected, it's measuring the voltage between the terminals. That's the same as the voltage across the resistor. The ammeter must be in series with the resistor. Note that an, a good ammeter has a zero or virtually zero resistance. So the ammeter has no effect. It's like having a piece of wire in place of it. No effect on the circuit's behavior. We know from an earlier lesson that the EMF is V plus IR. That's the voltage between the terminals plus the lost volts. You can get that from Kirchhoff's second law. If we rearrange the equation, we get R is E minus V over I. The value of internal resistance is EMF minus voltmeter reading with current divided by the current. I hope you recognize EMF minus voltmeter reading. That's the lost volts. We divide the lost volts by the current. We get the internal resistance. Let's do an actual practice example. Here's a set of results. If you want to pause the video, you could try this for yourself. What is the EMF? What is the internal resistance? Here's how I would do it. The EMF is very straightforward. It's V0, as we saw a moment ago. So the EMF is 2.0 volts. The lost volts, E minus V, is 2 minus 1.8. It's 0.2 volts. The internal resistance is E minus V, the lost volts, over the current. It's 0.2 volts divided by, well, the current was 220 milliamps. That's 0.22 amps. So it's 0.2 over 0.220. The answer is 0.91 ohms. Further straightforward way to get the internal resistance. Here's a more accurate but more demanding method. We use the same circuit as before but we replace the fixed resistor by a variable one, one whose resistance can be adjusted. What we're going to do is measure the voltage, measure the current, then change the resistor setting, doesn't matter to what, measure the new voltage, measure the new current, change the resistor setting, keep repeating that process try and get a good range of values from high values to low values of voltage and current. That will give us a set of values of V and I. I'll show you how to use that in a moment. The important point to note to get good results is that R should be chosen so that its maximum resistance is several times, maybe ten times at least, the resistance of R. If we choose the external resistor R to be too small, we'll never be able to adjust it to get 
small currents. To get small currents, we need a large resistance. If we can't get small currents, we can't get a good range of values for our for our experiment. And a good range of values helps us get accurate results. Okay, let's look at the sort of results. We could here, for example, when the voltage was 0.6 volts, the current was 5.94 amps, and so on. The bottom reading looks like the resistor has been disconnected. The voltmeter reading with zero current, simply 2.51 volts. We've then plotted the results on a graph. I on the y-axis, V on the x-axis. They're not a particularly good set of results. They're fairly, fairly widely spaced here. They're rather close together here. Ideally, we should have a set of points, and if we showed them on the graph, they should be fairly evenly spaced over most of the length of the line we're trying to plot. There's also another reading at the bottom. I'll mention that reading in a moment. Once we've plotted the points, we draw a best fit straight line. We extrapolate, that means project the line, to get the intercept values. 7.8 naught amps on the I axis, 2.5 naught volts on the V axis. This 2.51 on in the table was a reading. Notice it's not quite the same as 2.5 naught for our intercept value, even though it refers to zero current. And remember that a best fit line doesn't have to go exactly through each point. It's a balance, some points on one side, some on the other. And for that reason, the intercept here, 2.5 naught, is not quite the same as 2.51. And the best fit line is a good way of statistically averaging out our results. So the 7.8 naught and the 2.5 naught represent a good statistical average for the intercept values. What do we do with these results? Well, it's not too difficult. Let's take a look at the top intercept. The top intercept is a point where V equals 0 and I is 7.8 naught amps. The bottom intercept is a point where V equals 2.5 naught volts and I equals 0 amps. We've got our basic equation, E is V plus IR. We're just going to put the numbers in. So let's start with the bottom intercept. V is 2.5 volts, I is 0. Stick the numbers into the equation. E equals 2.5 naught plus 0 times R. Just putting the values of V and I in at that point. That leaves us with E is 2.5 naught volts. The EMF is 2.5 naught volts. Fairly straightforward. I hope you agree. We can then repeat the procedure. We've got the value of V and I at the top point. Just put the numbers in the formula. E is V plus IR. Well, I know E already. It's 2.5 naught. So let's write down the E value. That equals V, which is 0, plus IR, which is 7.8 naught times R. And that gives us R is 2.5 naught over 7.8 naught. And that gives a final answer R is 0 0.32 ohms. Did you see the technique? We use the coordinates of V and I values of the intercept at the top and bottom and just plug the values into the equation. There is a, an alternative and similar way of analyzing the data and there's a separate lesson on data analysis using the equation y equals mx plus c which you may identify, you may know that's the equation of a straight line. But that's in a separate lesson you can find and if you want to watch it you might find that useful because it includes working out internal resistance and EMF as an example. That's it. I hope you now know a bit more about internal resistance than you did at the beginning. Thanks for watching.